Legend has it that warriors led by the Prince of Sorbia migrated to the eastern cliffs of the Dinaric Alps, where they imposed their rule. Byzantium referred to the Slavs inhabiting the breathtaking coast of southern Dalmatia and the inland mountains as the Serbs. In 780, Serbian noblemen, Vyshoslav, united Slavic tribes in the area to erect the Principality of Serbia. Only five years later, a leader with an identical name from the Hrvati tribe would do the same. The linguistic origin of the name Hrvati is generally accepted to be Iranian, suggesting that some within the tribe were Scythians who had joined the Slavic migration. The word Hrvat, or Horvat, evolved to be Croat in Latin. Thus in English, this province is referred to as Croatia. Vyshoslav of Croatia would clash with the Franks. Despite Vyshoslav's victory at Trossat, his duchy accepted Frankish control in 803. Frankish annals mention Voinemirus Sklavus, Voinemir the Slav, a military commander who helped the Franks cut through the crumbling Avar Khaganate. For his service, he was made the Duke of Pannonia, a new Slavic duchy north of the Sava. It was at this time that Croatia and Serbia developed similar organised structures. Wealthy Jupans commanded their own militaries and had autonomy within their designated counties but answered to their Serbo-Croatian nobility. Khan Krum gave the 9th century a bloody reputation with his great Bulgarian expansion. The Serbian prince Vlastimir earned the respect of his people for his great victories in the Serbo-Bulgarian War of 839-842 and his adherence to the native Slavic faith. However, much like most of his people, he would later adopt Christianity. Through the marriage of his daughter, he secured control over the Slavs in Travunia and was able to integrate the Paganians, who the Byzantines regarded as being no more than cutthroat Serbian pirates. The Vlastimirovic dynasty was founded. They would adopt the patriarchal cross as a symbol of their adherence to Christianity. Up the coast, one Tripimir ascended to the Croatian throne, constructing his seat of power in Knin and established the Tripimirovic dynasty. Tripimir set his sights on Zadar, where he challenged the Byzantines. He too would join Serbia's eastern front and resist Bulgarian assault, proving to be just as strong and ferocious of a leader. Tripimir and Vlastimir would become celebrated among early tribes, but after their deaths, the power and prosperity they achieved would dissipate. For a time, Vlastimir's three sons ruled peacefully, but in 855, a vicious feud between them erupted. The descendants of Vlastimir would execute and blind each other for generations as brothers and cousins fought to hold the Serbian throne. Descendants of the Mutimir branch would often flee to Croatia for sanctuary, where the political climate was far more stable. In Croatia, the Tripimirovic dynasty was interrupted by Domagoj in 864. A brash ruler, he made Croatia an overly aggressive force in Dalmatia, weakening the state. Zdeslav Tripimirovic reclaimed the throne almost a decade later, but was then killed by Domagoj's son, Branimir. Branimir drew close ties with the Pope, who gifted Croatia complete independence. In 887, Branimir displayed his naval strength by defeating Venice, effectively removing the stain on his family name that his father burdened him with. Munzimir succeeded him, restoring the old dynasty. Croatia was quick to get back on its feet, Serbia had grown close to the Greeks, which angered the great Tsar of Bulgaria, Simeon I. Simeon dispatched Chaslav of the Stroyanir branch to take Serbia from his pro-Greek cousin, 
the young prince marched to his homeland and dealt a crushing blow to his kin. A thrilled Chuslav prepared for his coronation. Simeon I gathered all Serbian dukes to pay respects to their new leader, but it was a trap. The ruthless Tsar arrested them all and imprisoned Chaslav, paving the way for Serbia's annexation in 924. But assistance would come from a not so distant land. Croatia, an ally with Serbia and the Byzantine Empire, was Bulgaria's next target. Fourteen years earlier, the ambitious Tomislav inherited the Croatian duchy. In 925, he crowned himself king and was recognised as Rex Croatorum, King of the Croats by the Pope. As Bulgaria annexed Serbia, Serbs from the county of Rushka fled to Tomislav, who settled them in the eastern highland region of his realm under his protection. Tomislav assembled a large army of infantrymen, equipped with round shields and axes. Light cavalry units rode on the flanks for support. Bulgaria was forced to march the steep highland slopes, pushing them into an uncomfortable position when meeting the Croatian king. The Bulgarians did not expect such a large force and were massacred, while Croatia endured minimal losses. King Tomislav rooted out invading Magyars. Also known as the Hungarians, they too began to carve out a home for themselves in Eastern Europe. After consolidating his borders, Tomislav turned to the political battleground, as the specifics of church scriptures became a topic of debate. In the 9th century, the Byzantine saint Cyril studied the linguistics of the Slavic tribes in his hometown of Thessaloniki, allowing him to develop the oldest known Slavic script, Glagolitic. Cyril and his brother Methodius took their script to Moravia, where important Christian texts were translated into their new script. The Pope began to push for only Latin and Greek to be used in churches. Thus, Glagolitic lost support amongst the Western and Northern Slavs. It was Bulgaria that openly welcomed their scripts, under the Preslav and Ohrid literary schools. Glagolitic and Old Church Slavonic spread like wildfire in Balkan churches and noble households, where they would be written with for centuries. Tomislav played his role in maintaining Slavic liturgy in his realm, not allowing his native tongue to be replaced by Latin and Greek. Serbia still remained under Bulgar control, but Chaslav was still alive. Chaslav and four close friends escaped from prison and ventured back to their ravaged homeland. Hastily, this great-grandson of Vlastimir united the Serbs, Rashka, Zeta, Travunia, Zaklumia, and the newly formed county of Bosnia all swore their swords and axes. Together, they overthrew their Bulgarian overlords and freed Serbia. Despite this victory, Hungary was waiting at their doorstep. Near 960, the Magyar, Kisa, charged into Bosnia, but failed miserably. Kisa's widow would soon return for vengeance, killing Chaslav and his male heirs, anticlimactically ending the Vlastimirovich dynasty. In 969, parts of Bosnia were returned to Slavic control by Helen of Zadar, the first ruling queen of Croatia. Helen was a strong ruler who tightened Croatia's grip of Dalmatia, but her descendants would not earn her mother's reputation as they recklessly crippled Croatia through a bloody civil war. The Byzantines noticed the weakening of the Adriatic Slavs and made Duklia and Croatia their vassals. While Croatian vassalage was relinquished in 1025, the Serbian counties remained subjugated. The Greeks placed their trusted diplomat, Stefan Boislav, as Prince of Serbia, but, much like the rest of the Serbian diplomats, he yearned for independence. Stefan declared independence in 1034. The Greeks marched north along the glistening Adriatic to dethrone him. Stefan's son Radoslav killed Byzantine generals in a guerrilla ambush, after which they were sent to rot in the prison stone. 
Byzantium grew more furious. Their new emperor continued the influx of troops, sending men from Drush to take the mountains of Bar. The Serbian prince rode to the rocky peaks with a modest cavalry to meet the bulk of the invading force himself. On October 7, 1042, Stefan sent a messenger to scare the Greeks by falsely exaggerating the size of the Serbian guard. The prince and his sons glided through the southern Dinaric Alps, further inflating their presence with the sound of trumpets and maniacal screams. The encircled Byzantines were put in a state of panic, just as Stefan Boyslav had planned. Forty thousand Greeks lay dead in the dawn sun. In desperation, the Byzantines paid handsome sums to other Serbian rulers. The Ban of Bosnia, Prince of Hum, and the Count of Rushka advanced towards the victorious prince. Stefan Vojislav and his sons crushed them all, adding more land to the now independent Duklia. By the mid-11th century, Serbia and Croatia both earned respect in the Balkans and afar, but this was a wild and dynamic period in European history. In 1054, Christianity split. In the West, the Pope was seen as the supreme religious figure, while in the East, it was the holy patriarch of Constantinople. Known as the Great Schism, this event would divide the continent plunging the Balkans in the middle of a violent tug of war between East and West. Croatia's Kresimir IV responded by declaring Catholicism the faith of Croatia. Kresimir increased trade and developed infrastructure in Dalmatia. In later historical sources he would be dubbed Kresimir the Great, as under him, Croatia reached its peak in early medieval history. The Pope pulled strings in Serbia, recognising Stefan's son Mihailo as King of the Slavs, as the Pope supported him and his son's ongoing wars with Byzantium. Duklia had become Serbia's crown land for generations. In 1075, King Zvonimir inherited Croatia and provided historians with the Bashka tablet. Written in Glagolitic, the tablet details early Croatian adherence to Catholicism and classical Slavic liturgy. In the Church of St. Lucy, where the tablet was discovered, is inscribed the checkerboard pattern, suggesting that the red and white Shavonitsa was employed in the middle to late 11th century. The origin of this symbol is shrouded in mystery. A popular tale is that King Stefan Drislav beat a Venetian in a game of chess to win his freedom and therefore adopted the design. After Zvonimir's death, his Hungarian brother-in-law, Ladislaus I, claimed Croatia, putting almost all of the kingdom under his control by 1091. Ladislaus's superior, King Coleman I, sought to take the Dalmatian port cities, which in turn would guarantee financial supremacy over the Slavic kingdom. So the 12 noble families of Croatia elected Petar of the Snačić family. Snačić called in his Dalmatian allies and rode to the great fortress of Knin, where they would plan their defence. In 1097, a large Hungarian force crossed the Drava 
with the support of the Pannonian Croats, who were promised increased autonomy. The defenders ascended Dalmatia, meeting the Hungarian king at the lush green hills of Petrovagora in the early winter of 1097. The epic battle of Gvoz Mountain ensued. Blood from both armies trickled into the soil, including that of Peter himself. The disobedient Croats drew their last breaths, and Coloman was crowned the King of Croatia. The twelve noble families signed Pacta Conventa, entering Croatia into a personal union with Hungary, sealing the fate of Croatia for centuries to come. With this cataclysmic turn of events, the future of the Principality of Serbia seemed dim. The Serbians were, like the Croats, ready to protect their homeland at all costs. But in a Europe growing ever more militaristic and destructive, how long would they last? 